certain point of not bringing food into your body, there's a thing called autophagy, so your cells begin to- Good morning, everyone. I have been up since about 5 a.m. Today, we are fasting for 24 hours, hopefully 36 if we can get there, and I'm fasting for my IBS. I wanna take you with me and vlog today to show you what it's like, how I'm feeling, I've been up since about 5 a.m. because I've just been working on stuff. I usually go to the gym during this time, but I didn't go to the gym today because we are fasting for 24 hours. So today I've just been up working on my blog, which is now live. You can see at jessicadebu.com. I'm documenting my whole IBS journey and healing process and everything under the sun that I'm doing that's related to my gut health and just overall health and well-being. We're fasting today and it's interesting because my naturopath recommended it for me. She used to work in this clinic where people would do a water fast for 30 days at a time and she would monitor them and it's something that I've been getting a lot more interested in. My boyfriend actually brought it up to me and he was like, hey, I think fasting could help with your IBS and I'm like, sir, I don't think it could because I always thought I needed to eat on a very consistent eating schedule so like I wouldn't have a flare up. But then I started doing my own research. I picked up this book by Mindy Peltz. It's called Fast Like a Girl. She talks a lot about how women need to fast differently from men and we should do it based around our hormones and our cycle and that's how we're going to gain the most benefits from long periods of fasting. Today, I'm right in my follicular phase. I'm just in my period. I'm gonna start ovulating soon, so now is the perfect time to take on a long fast. And again, it's something that my naturopathic doctor recommended. She's helping guide me through it. I recommend working with a doctor whenever you do this, or at least educating yourself before. I do wanna give kind of a trigger warning for anyone who is dealing with eating disorders or anything like that because we do talk about not eating for the next 24 to 36 hours. I have already done a 24 hour fast about three weeks ago and I had a huge detox. I was experiencing headaches. I ended up getting a migraine over the weekend. I just felt kind of horrible but then I felt really good and I think it's because my body was detoxing I was also going through a lot during the time I was already having a really bad IBS flare-up because of a SIBO test I was taking and I was testing for gluten and corn which were my trigger foods so it was a whole backstory but anyways I've decided to fast today because I'm in between my cycle and ovulation so it's the perfect time to kind of put my body through stress as bad of an IBS flare-up lately. It's actually been a really good past 24 hours for me, so I'm hoping that won't lead to such a bad detox after this fast. And then I'm also going to take steps to ensure that I break my fast properly. I am going to talk a lot more of what fasting does for IBS and just your overall body more throughout the day, but I want to have the mental support <laughs> to get through today, so... Let's begin. It's now almost 7 a.m. The sun is out and shining. It is such a beautiful day in the city. Ugh, makes me want to get outside, so let's go ahead and take a little walk. today but key to doing a water fast for that long is obviously a lot of rest and recovery it's something that my naturopath recommended I keep in mind whenever I am doing a longer fasting period anywhere from one to two days so it's really important that you want to rest and recover during a day like today where you are fasting our body can sometimes go through a detox process and I experienced this the last time I did a 24 hour fast. You do want to pay attention to your body because it's probably detoxing a lot during a time like this. Whenever you aren't giving your body food, your cells begin to turn inward. It's a thing called autophagy. It was this Japanese scientist, he actually won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2016. Around his study of autophagy, it's basically when the cells begin to turn inwards and you direct energy not towards other processes in your body like digesting food, 
but the cells begin to heal themselves from the inside out. So they'll remove any unnecessary toxins, things like heavy metals from your body. If your mitochondria isn't working properly or if another cell function isn't working properly, energy is going to be direct at healing that or even killing off cells that are no longer serving you. This is probably going to be the only walk that I'm doing today and the reason why I'm getting up and moving is because I feel like I just need the sun, I need kind of the reset before I start my work day today. Also without having any coffee or caffeine, I feel like the sunlight is just going to give me the energy that I need throughout the day. I'm going to spend the day doing low energy activities, fully resting, recovering, and then making sure I'm just hydrating a lot throughout the day. I will be drinking a lot of herbal teas, but no caffeine to get me through. I will say some people are able to do a water detox and also drink coffee and still feel very jittery. So I don't drink any coffee. The key is you don't want to spike your blood sugar today. So if you think that coffee is going to spike your blood sugar or if you don't know about that, I would just try to stay away from any caffeine or coffee. But it's a good day that I don't have any work meetings or anything so I could just kind of keep my head down and do the work that I need to do. Then I'm probably just going to go back to the apartment, start drinking herbal tea. I also want to vlog the different stages of fasting because when you approach a new hour mark, there's some interesting things that happen within your body. Around the 12 to 15 hour state, so that's where I'm at right now, I'm going on like 13 hours, my body has switched over from using glucose as my main energy storage to ketones. May sound familiar, ketogenic diet. Anyways, so now my body is running off of ketones, that's how it's getting its energy storage. And a cool thing about that is I should be having like a lot more clarity. I'll be able to focus and concentrate a lot better just to have a clearer mind, more drive. So I'm moving into my ketone state. It's tea time. I've been drinking water all morning and now I'm drinking ginger turmeric tea. I'm only drinking herbal teas during my fast because the key is you don't want to spike your blood sugar levels. Coffee can do that for some people if you just drink straight black coffee. Some people can do that on a water fast and they're fine and they don't spike their blood sugar levels. Other people can't and I don't know what category I fall under and I don't want to screw up this water fast so I'm going to stick to herbal teas and water. But while I'm drinking my tea, I do want to talk about the first time I tried water fasting. It was something that was recommended to me by my naturopathic doctor. After I was two weeks into my IBS flare-up, I was doing everything I could to help relieve symptoms. I was drinking a lot of water. I was upping my probiotic intake, my fiber intake, eating really clean, not eating out. I removed my trigger foods, which were gluten and corn, which is why I think I had the whole IBS flare up in the first place, but nothing helped. I was even seeing a chiropractor and getting acupuncture done and my symptoms just kept on persisting. I reached out to my naturopath and she recommended that I could try water fasting. It's interesting the timing she brought it up because at the time my partner started to get more into like these 24 hour fasts, just explaining all the medical benefits to me. And I was like, haha, yeah, seems cool, but may not work for me in my situation. I was doing more research on my own. And so once she brought it up, I was like, hmm, you know what? There may be some truth to this. So I did the 24 hour fast and honestly it was really bad before it became really good. I knew my body was just going through a detox, which fasts like a girl. She talks about detox symptoms. I'm actually gonna bring it up. The thing is once you reach a certain point of not bringing food into your body, there's a thing called autophagy. During this time, we're purging a lot of like mercury, lead, aluminum, and environmental pollutants that are no longer needed within our cells. The thing is we have all of these different pollutants stored in various places throughout our body. It's stored in our pancreas, liver, and lymph nodes. Once your body, because when you're fasting, your body's going to do anything it can to keep you alive. That's like its number one goal. So it's going to rid of anything that's not serving you, including those environmental pollutants that are stored in those various 
organs in your body. It's going to be pushed out of those organs and enter your bloodstream. That's where those detox symptoms are going to come into play. This is why you also want to be really careful whenever you fast as a woman because you want to mirror with your hormones. So let's say if you're a week before your period, your progesterone is starting to climb during that time. You don't want to put your body in a stress state because when our cortisol or our stress rises and we have our progesterone starting to rise because our period is about to start, we're not going to get the period in the timely manner that we need it to because cortisol inhibits progesterone. And if progesterone leads to our period, we're not gonna get it, which is not good for us. Like we should be getting our periods every month. It's a way that our body detoxes. You do wanna be careful around the timing like that. And that's why I love this book, Fast Like a Girl. It's pretty much like this whole vlog is turning into me just talking about this book and all my findings within it, but it is just so fascinating what she talks about and everything, like the way she puts it begins to make so much sense. And I'm gonna link Diary of a CEO. This is where I first found Mindy Pelt in this interview. So I definitely recommend checking out that podcast episode. And then if you're wanting to learn more, taking a deep dive into her book too. So we're gonna drink our tea and then it's time to get started with our work day. It is it is almost one o'clock now, so I am approaching about 17 hours into this fast. I'm starting to get a bit of a headache. I'm feeling really tired. My energy is definitely settling a bit as my body is shifting from like that ketogenic state to autophagy. What's happening is the cells within my body are basically clearing out anything that's not serving me. And the longer I stay in this fasted state, the more it's gonna be able to clean out. It's usually lunchtime for me right now, so I would typically take this time to cook a lunch, eat a meal, take a break from my laptop. Instead, I'm going to still take a break, step away, but I'm going to rest in other ways. I'm trying not to be too lazy today, even though I kind of feel just like laying in bed all day. I'm going to do some active rest, which means like doing things that you love, but that's not totally draining you. I want to read a bit. I've been reading the It Ends With Us book. Y'all, I don't think I've been through a book as quickly as I have with The Sins With Us in like ages. I've always loved reading. I've read since I was a kid, used to go through like a book a day, but I haven't found a book in a while that's just like made me wanna sit and read all day. So now I have that, I'm going to read a bit, maybe close my eyes and take a nap because yeah, my energy is definitely starting to crash a little bit. My body is already going through a ton of stress, so I don't want to do anything that's too stressful. I don't want to cause any external stress from work or do a hard workout like that's not the time for this. The last thing I want to do is have added stress on my body and then deal with adrenal fatigue, and that's a whole nother set of issues that I do not want to go into. We're going to take this time to rest and recover and let my body heal itself from the inside out drinking more water. This is only my third glass, so I'm not doing too great on drinking a lot of water today, but I am gonna add some Himalayan salt in here. It helps bring minerals and electrolytes to my drink, so don't feel nauseous and actually hydrating myself. Get that salt in there. It's only 1 p.m. and I hit such a hard wall. We're definitely gonna take a nap now. It's now like 3.30 p.m. I've been in bed for literally a couple hours. I finally finished my book. It ends with us. I cried at the end. I don't know why I did that. It's like, do you feel bad for them? Do you feel happy, relieved? I don't know, all kinds of emotions. Very good. I don't know if I'll read the second one though. I feel like this one gave me a lot of closure, so we'll have to see. But I am now just working from bed and I just feel so tired <laughs> so like fatigued i'm like not even tired but just like my head hurts and my energy is super low and i don't feel like getting up and moving a lot this is probably a really good sign that i'm feeling this detox because that means the water fast is working properly and old cells are dying off new cells are regenerating and hopefully it will get me feeling better towards the end of the week it's funny because I was texting my boyfriend. I was like, hey, how do you feel? Because we both have any instance 8 p.m. last night. And he was like, I feel great. I'm doing amazing. And I'm like, of course you are. Because you don't have like a yeast overgrowth. One hour remaining. 
I think I need a shower or do something to hold me over. Ready to break the fast. Okay. 